the faces of the future. A future that should be full of opportunities for the children of Wow, but right now life is a constant struggle for access to food, clean water, healthcare, schooling and shelter. Thousands of families have fled their homes in the western Bar al Ghazar region of South Sudan because of ongoing fighting between government and opposition forces. That time we went to the forest. We ran, we ran off the forest. When we came, we see that it's very complicated for us to live at home. Hmm? Most of people during the night, a person to be knock the door, come out, come home, you are going to die. They have gathered in makeshift camps, relying on humanitarian aid and each other to survive. Today was really sad because we drove around through the village that a lot of these people had come from. and It's a beautiful village with trees and crops growing, um, often brick houses. It's, it was, you know, it was one of those ideal kind of places. And then you come here and people are living under plastic sheets, um, surviving from one day to the next. We've got a fine day today, but I mean, when it rains, I can only imagine what it's like. You know, well, I've actually seen camps like it in the rain. Um, it will be miserable. So that's why people really do want to go home. Um, and living here is a really, really poor second option. On a visit to the camp, the head of the United Nations mission in South Sudan explained plans for a new approach to enable people in these camps to return home to live safely in a supported environment. It actually has to work together, hand in hand. Um, there has to be both the, the level of security so people feel safe to come back and that they'll do that and make their own assessment themselves. It won't be us saying to them they're safe. And at the same time, uh, in the, at the moment in the, in the, in the camps that they're receiving humanitarian support, we've got to also make sure if they do come back that that support follows them. This new model of cooperation would involve UN peacekeepers and humanitarians working together intensively with local authorities, police and national security services. We need an enabling environment for security uh, to prevail in the whole of world. And that enabling environment can only be guaranteed by the police and the state government. Uh, the bringing in of the military was meant to fight the rebellion. And of course now, right now, uh, the, the, the level of rebellion has, course, has gone down. We have not seen rebel activities in the last three months in around Wau. So uh, there will be no more need for the military to be intensively in, in, uh, deployed around the, the town because that creates fear among civilians. Humanitarian services would need to be shifted from delivering on a collective basis to targeting the most vulnerable in communities. What are the main problems you're seeing? Are they... The main problem here is the malaria. Malaria, malaria infections. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And have you got enough drugs and things for it? Yeah, enough. No? Uh -huh. Aid workers would need guaranteed safe access and secure buffer zones around communities may be needed to ensure people can move freely and grow their crops safely. However, if it works, it's a model that could be replicated across the country. You know, I know that it's challenging, but you know, there is no option. You know, and we should not, uh, we should not uh, surrender our our desire actually to reach you know, that, that end uh, of the game that is actually making sure that people can go home, can stay you know, in a better environment with, with communities. The UN protects just over 32,000 displaced people at a camp next to its WOW base. Living conditions are the most cramped of all the protection of civilian sites in South Sudan. However, the improved security situation in WOW recently encouraged almost 6,000 to return to their homes. While peacekeepers already provide a protective presence, UNMIS is offering to introduce night patrols, if permitted by local authorities. Humanitarians say a secure environment is a bottom line for those moving home. When we were driving today, there was a woman who just came running to the convoy screaming because they saw these seven, eight, ten cars of the UN and she was so excited to see the UN presence in Loco Loco. So, so that kind of, you know, a presence, it triggers that the people feel confident. You know, I'm not sure if we, are, we will be able to protect people, but again, is the perception that by us being there, 
it probably they will be protected. For the people here who've seen family members killed, had their homes looted, been beaten and traumatised by the ongoing violence, it is a difficult decision to make, when or even if it will be safe enough to finally take their families home.